hello and welcome to this course where i'm going to show you how to install and configure postgresql and also installing and configuring gnu cache so let's get started so we're going to start by downloading postgresql so if you open google search postgresql so you'll find there's a website postgresql.org so if you click there so this will take you to the Postgre website. So for you to download, go to the download section. So depending on the operating system that you are running, you will select the correct installer. In my case, I'm using Windows. So I'll just click Windows here. Then you go to download the installer. So you'll be taken to this page where it shows you all the different downloads from the previous versions. For Windows at the moment, at the time of recording this tutorial, the version that is currently available is 11.3 for a Windows download. So click download. So then you get this message where do you want to save your file? So I'll click save. So this will download my file. The download is complete. So we'll now start the installation. Normally I encourage you to just run as administrator so that it installs and it really has all components correctly. So now it is installing Microsoft Visual C++ 2017 redistributable. This is a prerequisite when you're installing your PostgreSQL. So the system will automatically download if it doesn't find it in on your computer already installed. So in my case, it didn't find it, so it's downloading it. So now you just click next. So this is the directory where it will install. So you can change it if you wish and just accept the default. So in this case, I'm just accepting the default. So when you are installing the system, it will ask you whether you want to install all these components or you can untick any of the components that you don't want to install. I'm just going to tick all and click next. The data directory, I'm just going to accept the path that the system is suggesting. So now the next thing that you need to decide is where do you want the data to be stored? So in this case, I'm just accepting the default. You need to create um, an admin password for your database. So in this case, I'm just going to enter a password. So you will need this password for you to connect to this database. And this is the port that is going to be used to connect. If you have a firewall, you need to make sure that this port has been opened in your firewall. So you click next. So you can see there are so many locales which will be the different languages that you can select and use. In my case, I'm going to use the default, which will be English. If you click next. So now the system has gathered all the information that it requires for you to start the installation. Now it's installing all the components that are required. So I'll pause the video and then we'll continue. So now it will ask you to launch the stack builder at exit. You have to tick launch stack builder at exit, then click finish. So now it will launch the stack builder. So now on the stack builder, click on the drop down list. If you are going to connect to a remote server, then you have to connect to the remote server here. But I am installing on the same machine that I'm going to use to connect. So I'll select the second option, then click next. Then you get to this particular screen. So this screen is very important because this is where you choose all the various other components. So I'll just show you which components you need to select. So if you click here, you can see further components that are beneath each. Okay. Okay, so in our case, we have already installed PostgreSQL 64-bit 11.3, which is the current version as at the time of recording of this tutorial. So you don't need to do anything on the database server we already have. Then you need to install some database drivers for you to be able to connect using ODBC connection when you're writing your reports or you're connecting to the database from an external source. So what I'll do is I'll just use the 64-bit connection. So I'm, you tick there. But if you're on a 32-bit machine, you can also select the 32-bit ODBC. Then I'm going to install on the tools and utilities. If you need the language pack, you can install the language pack. So this will, have, it will be multi-language. So I'll choose this one, bouncer and also the agent. Okay, so that's all you need. Okay, so you click next, then you click next. So now what the system is doing now is it's downloading all those components that we've selected and then the install will start. So I'll just pause, then we'll continue. Okay, so to continue with the installation now that is finished downloading, click next. As you can see, now it's setting up the agent. So you click next, accept the directors, next. So now you need to enter the password that you've created in the first steps that I showed you earlier. Then you click next. 
so this next step it needs you to enter the system user that will be used to run the service normally if you have a username created already you can just enter the details here so i'm going to accept the default and just give it a password so remember this user here is the windows user that runs the service so if you click next and if this user doesn't exist it will be created the moment you hit next so i'm going to create next so now the pg agent has been is ready to install so click next so it's creating all the schemas and the database so it has created and configured the pg agent schema in the postgres database so click ok then you finish so now it's gonna start installing the other components so now it has finished installing so if you click ok so now it is installing the pg bouncer so click next accept default if you want to change you can change specify that admin user that you created in the previous setups click next okay the listening port just accept the default if you have any reason to change please do so but just remember that you will need to open the port if you are if your firewall is turned on next so it's now installing the pg bouncer then you finish so as you can see the installation process is not that hard as long as you know which components you need to install that's all you need to know so now it's installing and setting up the odbc so click next accept the location the default location or change if you have a reason to so click next next so it's now running the installer installing the odbc and you use the odbc to connect to your report writing tools so if you then finish so now it is finished installing all the components that we require so now click finish so now what you just need to do is to go to your newly installed postgresql and go to postgresql 11 pg admin 4 so this is going to open the administrative tools so the administrative tools this was where you can run your S your queries you can view your database you can create your databases and all that stuff so i'm just going to show you it will when you when you open when you first open postgresql as you can see in my case it's linked to the local host and that port here i can see all the servers that are connected but in this case it will be just this one server which is the local host you need to specify that password that you you created doing so now you need to specify the password to the server click ok so as you can see now it will show you uh, the database area the logins you can create users you can create your databases and your agent jobs okay so this is this is the area where you will do most of your sql work if you want to write sql queries we will go deep into how you can use postgresql to, to read your data congratulations you have installed your postgresql database and you are now ready to connect your gnu cache so the next step that we're going to do will be to download and install gnu cache and then connect it to your database okay so now go to google and search gnu cache so if you go to gnucache.org so if you click download gnu cache okay so this is the home page where you can download as you can see you've got the windows installer and if you have other systems like linux then you can download the linux version but i'm going to download the microsoft windows so if i just click there there's so much information also that you can get on this website you've got the op files and everything so i'm going to show you how to install and configure gnu cache and link it to that database that you've created so you can save the file so now that gnu cache is finished downloading we're going to install okay select english or your whatever your language is click ok so accept the agreement click next so either accept the default location where the system is going to be installed or browse to a new location click next then you click next so the system is now installing gnu cache onto your computer okay click next then finish so now we've finished installing gnu cache so now that we've finished opening gnu now that we've finished installing gnu cache now let's set up our new set of books on the welcome page select the first option okay then you get this wizard so it's so easy to set up uh, a new set of books because everything can be done via this wizard so if you click next okay so here if you are going to use gnu cash for your small business then you might need to uh, to tick use trading accounts but i'm going to use this for my personal purposes and i don't need any trading accounts so i'm going to just say next so you choose the currency gnu cash is a multi-currency system so you can select whatever currency you want to use it for so i'm going to use it for australian dollar if you click next 
So here now, this is where you, you specify and pick which accounts you want to create. So these are common accounts that are used by an individual, like your cash in wallet, cash in a checking account, savings account. Then your equity, this is the amount that you put in and any expenses, which include fees, gas, parking and all that stuff. So all that information. So this is just a template to get you started, but you can add any accounts that you need as you go forward. So I'm going to just accept this and click next. So those are my accounts there, as you can see that I have accepted. Then I can click next. So I'm going to finish the setting up. I will apply. So as you can see, you can save Genu Cache as an XML file. You can use Lite 3, PostgreSQL, and MySQL. So, but I'm going to show you how to use PostgreSQL. So, what you do, you select Postgre, then localhost, or if you're connecting to a remote server, you specify the server name here. Then the database that you want to create you have to give it a name so i'm just going to say gnu cache accept, accept the defaults then you specify the user that is going to connect to the database and the password so all these are from the installation that you did previously then you go to service okay so as you can see my gnu cache has been created and has been successfully linked to the postgre database so what we're going to do i'm going to show you in the the database that has been created in postgre so if you go now to your browser and you specify the server and you go to your databases you see that one of the database there is the gnu cache which has just been created if you click there you can see all the languages and all the wrappers but i'm mainly interested in the schema so if you click on the schema under the schema, you have got the tables. So these are all the tables for your Gnu cache. So when you want to write reports and to query your database, you have to then create an ODBC, which I'm going to show you how to create an ODBC and then connect maybe Crystal Report or whatever reporting system that you are using to post gray and you can start writing your reports thank you so much you have just installed successfully uh post SQL and also gnu cache and also you have managed to connect your database thank you meet you in the next lesson